Hi there. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you all about adverbs. You will learn what is an adverb, what are the different types of adverbs, and how to use adverbs correctly. We will focus on avoiding common mistakes in two areas, comparative and superlative forms, and then the very important topic, putting adverbs in the correct position in a sentence. So let's start. Before we begin, as always, if you have any questions at all, just let me know in the comment section below and I will talk to you there. All right, so to start, let me ask you a question. What is an adverb? Some people say that adverbs are like adjectives. You know adjectives, words like good, bad, beautiful, tall, short, etc. They give information about nouns. So people say that adverbs give information about verbs. Well, that's only half correct because adverbs are very talented words. They can give us information about verbs, but they can also give us information about adjectives, other adverbs, and even about whole sentences. Now, adverbs are all around us. Words like slowly, unfortunately, very, enough, tomorrow, however, always, and so on and so forth. I'm sure that you use adverbs all the time. But why do we use them? Well, we use adverbs because they answer some important questions about our sentences. Questions like when, where, how, how much, how often, etc. Take a look at these examples. In number one, he ate the sandwich quickly. Quickly is the adverb. It gives information about the verb ate. How did he eat the sandwich? He ate it quickly. In number two, how beautiful is Tammy in that dress? She is really beautiful. It means very beautiful. So the adverb really modifies the adjective beautiful. That means it gives information about the adjective. In number three, we have an adverb of place. It's the word here, which gives us the answer to the question, where? In number four, we have an adverb of time. It's yesterday, and it tells us when. And in number five, can you identify the adverb? The adverb is the word sometimes, which answers the question, how often? How often do I drink coffee? Every morning? No, only sometimes. So here, you see all the different things that adverbs can do. And based on these functions, or the different jobs that they do, adverbs are divided into five common types. Let's talk about that. Okay, adverbs are usually classified as adverbs of manner, degree, place, time, and frequency. Adverbs of manner tell us how, that is, in what way an action happens. Adverbs of degree tell us how much, very good, really strong, and so on. Adverbs of place and time tell us where and when. And adverbs of frequency tell us how often, always, never, sometimes, etc. Now, there are also many other types, such as adverbs of opinion, fortunately, personally, sadly, etc. These help us to express our point of view. And there are also connecting or linking adverbs like moreover, however, on the other hand, or therefore. But the most important adverbs for us are the five that we discussed. Okay, at this point, I want to give you an important tip about words that end with L-Y. When you say adverb, People generally think of words like slowly, quickly, happily, sadly, quietly, loudly, and so on. So it's easy to think that all adverbs end with ly. But this is not true. In this chart, you can see many examples of adverbs that don't end with ly. Also, there are many adjectives that have this ending. Words like friendly, like she's a friendly person, or lovely, 
What a lovely bouquet. That's a bunch of flowers. These are adjectives and not adverbs. So remember, many adverbs don't end with ly, and some words that end with ly can be adjectives. So now, before we go any further, I want to give you a quick test and check if you can identify adverbs correctly. On the screen, you see five sentences, and I want you to identify all the adverbs. You get extra points if you can say what type of adverb. Pause the video now if you want, think about your answers, and then play the video again and check. Okay, how many adverbs did you identify? Let's see. In the first sentence, there are two adverbs. There is an adverb of place, and quietly is an adverb of manner. That is, it says how the action happened. Both of these adverbs modify the verb sat. In number two, the adverb is yesterday. It's an adverb of time. In number three, there are again two adverbs. One is downstairs, an adverb of place, and the second is fast, an adverb of manner. In sentence number four, the adverb is every day, and it's an adverb of frequency. And in number five, again two adverbs, well, which is an adverb of manner. It tells us that Camilla speaks English well, and the word quite, which is an adverb of degree. It gives information about well, that is, how well, quite well. It's like saying very well. So did you get all of the adverbs? All right, now that you know how to identify adverbs, let's move on and talk about comparative and superlative forms and how to avoid mistakes when using them. When we think of comparative and superlative forms, we usually think of adjectives. Uh, more beautiful, less expensive, stronger, higher, etc. But adverbs also have comparatives and superlatives. Now these are very easy, but many people make some common mistakes here. Let's look at a few examples and I'll explain. On the screen, you see two sentences. Both of these have comparative adverbs. In the first sentence, can you please speak more loudly? So we've added more to the adverb loudly and it becomes a comparative that modifies the verb speak. In the same way, in number two, adults learn things less quickly than children do. That means children learn more quickly and adults learn less quickly. So the comparative adverb less quickly modifies the verb learn. Now these two are easy, but here's where people make mistakes. Now you see two more examples, but this time I want you to choose the correct comparative form in each sentence. Stop the video if you want, think about your answers, then play the video again and check. Okay, let's discuss them. In number three, Leon's car goes faster than Benjamin's. Now the word fast can be an adjective if it modifies a noun or pronoun, or it can be an adverb. Like here, it gives information about the verb goes. And the comparative form is always faster. It's not more fast or fastly. Both of those are errors, never say them. And the superlative form of fast is fastest. Like if you want to say, Leon's car goes the fastest. Okay, and in number four, Amuda sings better than Mary does. This one is a little tricky because if you don't want to compare, normally you would just say, Amuda sings well. Well is the adverb. But in this sentence, we want to compare Amuda singing with Mary singing. The comparative form of well is better. It's never more well or more better. Don't say them. And the superlative form of well is best. Did you get both of these right? 
Okay, now the important point here is that there are some adverbs which have either ER and EST forms or irregular comparative and superlative forms. You see some of these on the screen. It's a good idea for you to memorize these forms so that you use them correctly. And if you want to learn more about comparative and superlative forms of adjectives, Watch my lesson on adjectives in this series. All right, now let's move on to our final topic in this lesson, and that is the position of adverbs in a sentence. Now, this is probably where learners of English make the most mistakes with adverbs. Over the years, many of my students have come to me and said, where exactly should I put an adverb in a sentence? It's so confusing. Okay, well first, let me ask you, how many positions can an adverb have in a sentence? The answer is three. There are three possible positions for an adverb in a sentence. These are beginning, middle, and end. Look at these examples. In the first example, Hopefully, my wife will be waiting for me at the airport. The adverb is hopefully. It shows my opinion or how I feel, I hope, and it is in the beginning or initial position. This means that the adverb is at the start of the sentence or clause or before the subject. In the next two examples, the adverb is in the middle position, that is between the subject and the main verb. In number two, the adverb often comes directly after the subject I and before the verb travel. In number three, the adverb still comes after the helping verb am and before the main verb working. But this is still called the middle position because it's not in the beginning or at the end. And in the last example, you see an adverb in the end position or at the end of the sentence or clause. The adverb beautifully. Okay, so how do you decide where to put an adverb? Well, the bad news is that there are many, 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 many rules regarding adverb position in English. But thankfully, there's some good news too. And that is that if you know the most important rules, you can avoid the most common mistakes. So let's talk about these rules now. Now before I give you the rules, I'm going to test how much you know. On the screen there are nine sentences and all nine sentences are wrong. They have errors in the position of adverbs. The adverbs are underlined. In each sentence I want you to correct the error by putting the adverb in the correct position. Stop the video. Think about your answers, then play the video again and check. All right, let's look at the answers. The first two sentences have adverbs of degree in them. In number one, the sentence should be, Maya looks extremely angry. This is because when an adverb of degree, extremely in this case, modifies an adjective like angry, the adverb should come first. So adverb first, then adjective. In number two, the problem is that adverbs of degree, very, really, etc., don't usually go at the beginning. This is just like the last example, but here the adverb really tells us about the verb likes. So the best place to put it is right before the verb. So Lucy really likes pancakes. Sentences three and four have adverbs of manner. So what about number three? Here, the adverb carefully is in between the verb placed and the object of the verb, the candles. This is a very important rule. Never put an adverb between a verb and its direct object. A verb that has an object is called a transitive verb and it loves its object so much so don't separate them. The best place to put the adverb is before the verb. So Jeremy carefully placed the candles on the cake. 
In number four, we have an intransitive verb. That is, the verb laugh does not have an object. You cannot ask laughed who or laughed what. Now, if you don't understand this point, uh, watch my lesson on verbs in this series. Okay, so with intransitive verbs, that is verbs with no object, we put the adverb of manner after the verb. So the audience laughed loudly at the comedian's jokes. And now, let's turn to adverbs of frequency. In number five, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that frequency adverbs, like always and never, usually go in the middle position, that is, between the subject and the verb. So, I never watch horror movies. Now, some frequency adverbs, like sometimes or often, can go at the beginning or end in some situations, but usually, we put frequency adverbs in the middle position, before the main verb. Now, that is, except in a sentence like number six, if the main verb is be, or any form of be, am, is, are, was, were, or will be, then the frequency adverb goes after the verb be. So, Rashida is sometimes late for work. But this is only for the verb be. All right, what about number seven? Here, notice that there are two verbs. The main verb is carry, but there's also a helping verb, should, which is a modal verb. When there is a helping verb, we usually put adverbs of frequency between the helping and main verbs. So find the two verbs and stick the adverb in the middle. So you should always carry a first aid kit in your car. In number eight, the adverb every, every year is in the wrong place. It should be at the beginning or at the end of the sentence. It's a little more natural to put it at the end. So I go to my family home for Christmas every year. The rule here is that if you have an adverb of frequency that is definite, meaning it mentions day, week, month, or year, it goes in the beginning or end position. In number nine, the problem is similar. If you have an adverb that says how many times, once, twice, etc., it has to go at the end. It's not common to put it at the beginning or middle. So Marcos has eaten sushi twice. How many of these did you get right? Now, I know that we just looked at a lot of rules. And you know what? These aren't all the rules for adverb position. There are many more in English. But if you know these rules, the rules that we just discussed, you will be able to avoid the most common mistakes. And I promise they will get easier with time and practice. Okay, so in this lesson, we first looked at what is an adverb. Then we uh, discussed the different types of adverbs, adverbs of manner, degree, place, time, and frequency. And then we turn to avoiding common errors, first with comparative and superlative forms of adverbs, and finally with uh, putting adverbs in the correct position in sentences. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember to subscribe to this channel for more free English lessons, and I will see you in another lesson soon.